years ago on the uh, trading floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, um, right before online trading came about. So all we're doing here is quantifying the market's real supply and demand. Um, and we do that to be able to answer two questions. Where is price going to turn and where will price move to? To understand this both at a basic and uh, deep level, let's answer those questions. So where do prices turn in any and all markets and for any and all financial purposes, right? Active day trading, uh, weekly, you know, income trading, swing trading, whatever you want to call it, and then longer term investing, longer term positions. So we apply this equally to all of those financial purposes. But where will prices turn? So if we back up and answer that, we know that prices turn at levels where supply and demand is out of balance, meaning you have many unfilled buy or sell orders at a price point. Okay, so if market prices are falling and they reach a level where demand exceeds supply, right? once the last sell order is filled, you have uh, demand, right? And all this competition to buy forces prices up. Prices um, then move higher and finally reach a level where supply exceeds demand. Once the buy or last buy order is filled at that point, prices fall because of the competition to sell. That's this area down here on the screen and the area up here. So unfilled orders cause prices to turn. Therefore, filled orders answer question number two. Filled orders facilitate price movement. So the lack of a supply and demand imbalance makes it very easy for prices to move. Okay. So if you look at the screen, Okay. When prices fall to price levels where demand exceeds supply, the opportunity to buy is high probability. Profit zones are large, right? Reward, risk reward is ideal. And then same thing on the upside for supply. In the middle, we want to do nothing. Okay. Um, now, we don't, a lot of people say, well, that's equilibrium. Well, it's never equal. So I like to call it relative balance. Right? There's never, there's no price point in the market where supply and demand is actually equal. Even though prices aren't moving, and maybe you look at your screen and the candles are just moving sideways, trading sideways, it's still an unbalanced equation behind the scenes. It just takes a certain period of time for that unbalanced equation to play out. Okay? Now here's the challenge for people that sit in front of their screens a lot and trade or, or try to trade or look to trade. Where does price spend most of its time? Look on the right side of the screen. Now, don't hold me exactly to these percentages, but generally, price spends the vast majority of its time in the middle, in this white space, in the no trade zone. Price spends very little time out at demand and out at supply. Now, why is that? Because supply and demand are so out of balance there. Does that make sense? So our goal is to identify the picture that represents demand, supply, and this area in the middle. So we want to be able to recognize right, those two things, supply and demand levels, and then the middle or the white space here. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Another way to say it is, <clears throat> you know, when developing the strategy, I used to handle big orders from banks and financial institutions and the footprint of those orders in the market is very clear. It's crystal clear. People will say, oh, well, Goldman Sachs is never going to tell you where they're buying and selling. Well, they may not, but the market sure does. It's crystal clear if you know what you're looking for. So let's spend the rest of our time together today practicing this in the real markets uh, and uh, map out some opportunities that we've, uh, some new opportunities coming up and of course opportunities that we've gone over in uh, recent sessions, past sessions at FX Street.
if you have any questions, um, you know, after the session or what have you, there's my email address up in the corner, sam.siden at tradingacademy.com. All right. All right, so let's pull up the markets here. There they are. Now, let's take a look at, uh, and again, I can go over just about any market you want to look at. Why don't we start with the dollar? Okay, we'll make this a an FX focus session, but of course we can really look at any market. Now I have many of these levels mapped out on the charts already that uh, um, I do a lot of prep work. I deliver a morning session every day for our members at Online Trading Academy. And uh, again, you can always email me if you have any questions on any of that type of stuff. So let's start with the dollar. We're gonna use multiple time frame analysis. We're gonna look at multiple time frames to answer two specific questions. Where is price going to turn and where is it going to move to? All right, there's no one or two time frames that will always answer those questions consistently for us. But by looking at, I'm sorry, multiple time frames, we can do that. Let's start with the larger time frames here. And let's do, um, let's go over the weekly. So for those who have been in uh, my sessions for a while, all right, we've had uh, all these levels on the chart. I haven't changed anything uh, at all since, uh, uh, you know, last year. And all we've done is trade from demand at 95.50. Slowly, uh, the market has been making its way up to the 99 area or more specifically, uh, 98.80. Uh, yes, we will definitely go over some good supply and demand zones, all right? The reason why we're starting with the dollar is because most of the FX markets that everyone trades, right? We need to know where the dollar is going first. If we can figure out where the dollar is going to turn and going to go, getting the other markets right is not that difficult. Okay. From here, uh, let's go all the way down to um, not the daily chart, but um, well, we can. Let's let's do that. Whoops. A few levels we need to be aware of. So the 9660, again, 9660 is a key level for the dollar. And it's not that far below uh, current price. If the dollar comes down to here, we expect it to move higher, meaning we expect the euro to move lower and, and other currencies against the dollar. All right. And I don't just want to go over levels here, but I want to make sure that you, you know, you, you really understand this. So take a look at this demand zone. Okay. Obviously, that represents this down here. Correct? Right? Get that? But now take a look at this area up here, the no trade zone or the area where we expect price to move quickly through. Okay. All of that is this and again after this we'll go we'll speed up on going through markets see all this and I'll make that white just to make it even easier this picture down here represents the picture of uh, the footprints of big banks financial institutions the smart money buying how do we know that because there was very little trading here first of all we have the pattern that we need there's very little trading here and a strong rally away from that level. Why was there such little trading here? How come, how come we, we didn't see a lot of trading here? It's okay, Philippe, and I'll explain why in a few minutes. How come so little trading here and price couldn't stay here and rallied away? Simply because there's too much competition to buy, right? And we see price attempted to come back here, couldn't. And I'm not saying this is the best demand zone ever. It's not the case at all, but it does qualify. Just the opposite question. Why is it that price was able to spend so much time in this range over the past two, three months? You had so much trading activity, so much wide and whippy trading activity in here. Why is that? Right? And the answer is because there was nothing to stop that from happening. A lack of significant buy or sell orders, demand or supply. Does that make sense? 
So we expect price to move quickly through this area. Sitting just above this is the 98.80 to 99, that, that major supply zone up there. And again, uh, we have our demand zone below here. So this is how we start to put, you know, remember when you look at a price chart, there's only two things to identify in a price chart. And that's when you know you've got this. Obviously you'll see it in your trading results also, but when you have this, that you know, you'll, you'll look at any price chart, any time frame, and you'll see one of two things. It's either filled orders or unfilled orders. Okay. So we want to look at every market and be able to identify this demand supply up here, and then also clearly identify this middle zone white space. Is everybody very clear on that? And that's what we do. Okay. So we've got our level um, down there. We did actually come into uh, the 97, uh, you can call it 97 even, I guess, at this point. But 97.05, we went over this level last time we had an FX Street session. And we've been, um, we came, this is not the first time we're back to this level. We've been back here a couple times. So um, we would not take this level again because uh, over the past uh, 24 hours, price has gone more than 50% into this level, which means we don't want to take that again. All right. But again, here's that big range that price can easily move through. So watch that, uh, watch that daily level below. Then of course, um, on the 60 minute, you can see we also have a demand zone here. It's not fresh, not a fresh level down around 96.70. And then supply is significantly higher near the top of the range. So that's kind of, you know, we just looked at three different time frames. Found you know a couple demand zones, couple supply zones, generally in the same area, with a lot of that uh, wide and whippy, you know, white space range in the middle. Let's move on. Now we can go to the euro, and I can go to the you know I can again I can go to the spot market and go to the futures. It's really up to you. I'm here for uh, for you folks, so wherever you want to go. Not a problem. Let's start with our, and we here we want to see obviously opposing zones to what we just looked at in the dollar. And if we go right to our four hour chart, well, first of all, larger time frame. These are the levels that we've been dealing with in a big time frame. There's a much larger time frame chart of the euro. And we've just been kind of moving from supply, slowly drifting down to demand, just like the dollar is moving from demand to supply. And, um, you know, we'll just leave that alone. It is what it is. One of the key time frames to look at here in the euro is this four hour chart. We see supply up around 112.95 up to 113, about 113.10. And then down below 111.35 down to about 111.24. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the, I see your question. The supply demand is a consolidation, right? Price consolidates here, very tight congested area for a short period of time and collapses away. So that tells us there's like this, uh, think of it like a supply demand battle going on behind the scenes. And, um, and it's over fairly quickly, right? Because the supply side is so much greater than the demand side and then price collapses. Now, how can we be confident that there's still supply left up here at this point? Well, again, I've been I've been using and, and sharing this strategy for uh, uh, well, it's been uh, like 20 years now. But think of the logic first, okay? Think of how um, the smart money, banks, financial institutions, and even individuals. How does the smart money? Uh, what actions and thoughts do this, does a smart money take? In other words, if someone who is selling significant, a significant amount of uh, euros up here at 112.95, and then price starts to fall, are they going to um, are they going to say, "Oh, we'll just sell at a lower price"? Do they move their order? 
No, not usually. Maybe occasionally a little bit. I hardly ever see it. Um, and all my days on the trading floor, I don't remember seeing that uh, much at all. So uh, the chart is just a reflection of where those orders are. So we can take a look, Victor, at the Aussie dollar. Uh, we can look next if you want. Keep in mind on the 15-minute chart, we do have some demand down in the 112.17 area. Okay, and two levels on top of each other. They go down to one, um, right, right, uh, about 111.20. Uh, I'm sorry, um, about 112. Okay, so about 112.18, it, it down to 112. All right, so watch that level if you're an active uh, short-term trader in the euro. We can certainly go to the Aussie dollar. That's a that's a great question. So, um, yeah, we'll look at the DAX, Mike. Very strong market, the DAX uh, today. So Victor asked a question. Um, RBA cut the interest. Uh, Aussie should be going down. Why is it still going up? So that is a, a question that tons of people ask in different markets for different news-related reasons, and. Uh, the answer, before we look at the chart, is because that's the supply-demand equation there, okay? And the news just speeds up what was going to happen anyway. So if you look at the Aussie chart, um, and we're on the spot Aussie here, let's go over some, some levels. Okay. We have right here, oops, price came down to our 60-minute demand zone. If you're in, in our, my sessions in the morning, you may actually be in this trade. And uh, there's plenty of room to rally. In other words, there's no significant supply to stop that until, uh, really, until we get up to this level right here. So let me change this to a weekly chart. There it is. Not a whole lot of, I mean, there are some other little supply zones before that, but nothing nothing significant. Okay, nothing nothing significant. So there's room. Look at how far down price was, uh, and then we came into this 15-minute zone. All right. Think about it. If there's news, here's how it happens, and this is what gets so many people confused. Uh, let me start with this statement. If you want to see a market go up significantly, just get everybody to sell. Now, people hear that and they say, oh, wait, Sam, I think you misspoke. You said if you want to see a market go up, get everybody to sell. No. That's the truth. That's how it works. When 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 a significant news event happens, that bring you know that invites lots of supply, lots of people selling, and so on. Okay, all of that competition to sell, right? When all that supply is coming into the market, think about it. There's not enough available demand at current prices to fill all those orders. So it drives price lower because the market is simply looking for buy orders so that all those sell orders could be filled. And where are all those buy orders going to be found? Okay, where, where are those buy orders going to be found? Uh, yeah, Black Eagle is asking, do we have a, a common rule for our levels? Absolutely, it's 100% rule-based, extremely rule-based. But where are you gonna find all those enough buy orders to fill all that, all that supply from a strong news event coming into the market? Right? My whole goal has been over these years to train you to identify price levels where you have tons of demand and tons of supply are supply and demand levels, right? So now think about it, price is down into demand. Now you can finally fill all those sell orders, right? Now the last sell order is filled at a price level where demand greatly exceeds supply. And now you don't have any sell orders because it's uh, not any, but you don't have many sell orders till much higher. That's why prices shoot up like that. We have a slide deck I can share with you next time, perhaps, of all the big news events over the past 20 years. And you'll see every time, good or bad, that's exactly what happens. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the Aussie dollar. Let's move on. We looked at the, the dollar. We looked at the euro. We looked at the Aussie. Uh, if it's okay, let's move on to the yen. And then um, we'll get to some other markets. I see, uh, yep, we can look at the pound Swiss. 
No worries. We'll look at that next, Keith. You know, give me just one, um, just give me 30 seconds here. I just want to fix this. Um, I'm hearing this buzzing, and I, I just want to unplug this cord and plug it back in. Give me just, uh, give me just one second here, one minute. There we go, that should be better. Does it sound okay for everyone? All right. So let's take a look at the dollar yen. Um, let's start with a four hour chart right here. Uh, actually, you know what, let's find, let me, let me show you some demand first. And for that, we're gonna go right here to the 180. So. Um, that was a supply zone we had in our session there, and I want to show you a level that's sitting just below current price. This is definitely a level. A bunch of people in, our, in the morning session uh, reported they, they were in this trade this morning. But the level down here, 107.75 to 107.34. Okay. Uh, the market almost got down there. Let me see. There we go. So this level is still a good level. In fact, I don't even think we touched this level. Um, we touched it already back here. So that's some secondary evidence that demands exceed supply here. And then, um, so we would still, if you make a new low into this level, we would expect a rally out of this area. So watch for that, a new low in the, in the dollar yen. And, uh, and of course, watch the dollar index as well. So that's the demand side. And for, to, uh, to show you where some near term supply is, we'll go to the 60 minute chart. There's a nice level that uh, we can see clearly on the 60. 108.73 to uh, 108.92. All right, there it is. And that would be, so you can see the range, you know, is uh, basically this level down to about the lows. So risk reward with both of these levels, not outstanding. Of course, you have another level up here. I didn't, I didn't put this in just because um, we're going to hit this level first, but another little level right there. That is not a level. Someone asked before, and yes, everything about these uh, supply demand zones is, is very rule based. And often what appears to be a supply or demand level uh, is not a supply demand level at all. So make sure you know you understand all this before you, uh, before you try this. In fact, you could have two identical looking levels. Uh, one works and one completely doesn't. And there's a reason for that. The, the reason is this. Is the level in the white space relative balance, or is the level down here in demand or up here in supply? Okay. In fact, let me see if I have a, an example here. I do. Take a look at this real quick. This is just part of a lesson. Um, I do some of these lessons sometimes for the group. I just want to give you a little piece of one. But take a look at this chart in the lower left corner. See that? Here you have a really good looking demand zone, a really good looking supply zone. Neither works, both fail miserably. See that, everybody see that clearly? That's why I say be careful trying this until you, you get it. Those zones look perfect, but they don't work. We would never, those would never qualify as supply or demand zones that we would take. Why? Because if you look over to the right, they were formed right here in the middle, in the white space. Those are those are supply demand zones that are in here. The levels during our sessions, this is a screenshot from one of our sessions that worked well, were the same, the same pictures of supply and demand only up here and down here, right? You need to, uh, whoops, where is it? Oops, sorry, there we go, let me get there. Bunch of uh, lesson slides here. 
There we go. Okay. So you may have absolutely perfect looking lessons that score out very high with, you know, or whatever. But, uh, but if they're here in the middle, don't take them. If they're out here, absolutely take them. So it's something subtle, but it's, it's something that's not going to jump out at you as we go market to market to market. I don't expect you to get it or perfect this just from that last few minutes. But I want it's I, my the purpose in this session is to make you aware of that, All right? Because if you're taking like perfect looking level and say I don't understand, some work perfect, some don't work at all. That's why. And and what matters is are there orders there or not? Uh, Philippe can be, but doesn't have to be. Uh, you know, same general time frame. Yeah, let's go back. I think uh, someone wanted to look at uh, what was that? The pound Swiss. I think it was a pound Swiss next. Yeah, we can do that. All right. So I don't think there's going to be any levels on our charts here. So let's let's take a look. So we'll start uh, generally with the bigger time frames, and you know what the daily chart is telling us is look. Uh, it's not giving us a ton of information. We're going to go down to smaller time frames, but we generally have some supply sitting up here that we'll dive into. We don't see any demand in here, but we're going to go look for it. Um, so let's go do that. I'm going to go down to the four hour chart and scrunch up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't help us on the demand side. On the supply side, we start to see some supply up there, but I want to take another look at that. Um, so I'm going to explode that up by looking at a uh, the 180 minute chart. Okay. And what jumps out at us is this little level sitting right here. So this market looks like it has some room to rally up to the 126.80 area. Okay. Uh, there it is. So that's 126.80. And then um, on the demand side, yeah, not a whole lot. We'd have to go down. Um, let's go down one more time frame. What I'll do is I'll put a horizontal line across the bottom here. Then we're going to scroll back until we hit that line. And there it is. Okay. So these two things are not demand. So the next time down, we'd expect prices to go lower. Um, it looks like here's the area right here. Okay, on the demand side, that's really this is really all we have to work with. Uh, no, so good question there. So someone's asking, when we say supply and demand, do we mean support resistance? No, um, absolutely not. Um, so back in the late 90s, mid to late 90s, when I was developing the strategy, I didn't, I did, I never learned about conventional support and resistance, like trends and and support resistance and all the all the patterns and pictures and indicators and oscillators. But once I did, I had already you know, develop my own strategy, right? Supply and demand. And, and then all of a sudden I hear about this stuff called support and resistance. And I start to look at it and it didn't make any sense to me because there's some major flaws uh, with it. I can go over a couple of them here if you want, just so you can understand. But no, when I say supply and demand, I'm not at all talking about support and resistance. Two very different things. So let me, let me, let me give you one example. Um, of why it's such a flawed uh, way of thinking. How many, so to draw a support line, a line of support, right? Based on the conventional technical analysis rules, how many points do you need to draw that line? Like what's the rule for support? How many, how many points do you need on a chart? Two, three, some people are saying two, some people three, yeah. Five, five might be a lot, but um, I think I think most of the trading books say three, right? Right. So so think of this. So, so answer these questions with me. 
So now you have price coming down to a price point three times. And now the rule is you're supposed to draw a line and extend it to the right, correct? What are you supposed to do the next time price comes back to that, that line according to the rules? What are you supposed to do? Yeah, you're supposed to buy. That's in every trading book ever written. But let me ask you this. What's happening every time price comes down to that price point? Is demand increasing or is demand decreasing? Right? Every So you have one point, two points, three points. What's happening to the demand? Exactly. So that's that's one of the like three or four major reasons why that whole school of thought never made sense to me. And I've never known anyone to make a consistent low risk, you know, living uh, using that stuff. Um, okay, exactly. So in other words, what what that, you know, what that what those rules are really telling you is don't take the high probability trade, wait till it's low probability and then buy. Does that make sense? I mean, doesn't that sound crazy? All right. And again, I trust me, I'm no smarter than anybody else. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the smartest one in our group here. Okay. But what I'm telling you is um, my big benefit in all this is that I started out learning this the right way. I didn't know there was a whole, I didn't, I've never, I'd never heard of technical analysis when I learned all of this. And, and I didn't really have people teaching me. I just, I just had a, I started with a summer job on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, facilitating order flow for big banks and financial institutions. So you know what I did? I just watched. And I was like a little kid. I was like a sponge. I didn't, I didn't know that stuff. I didn't understand it. I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't like an economics. I was like 20 years old, 19 years old. You know what I mean? Uh, 21. I was, what did I know? So I just said, okay. I've got all these massive buy and sell orders in front of me. It's my job to facilitate them. Oh, guess what? Every time price in whatever market comes down to this big stack of buy orders I have, it stops falling and turns higher. Every time price comes up to this giant stack of sell orders I have, it stops rallying and turns lower. Not sometimes, every time. So I said, oh, okay, this is just supply and demand. Now, when this stuff, when this thing called online trading came about and you could look at price charts at home, what I did was I said, okay, now I just need to train my eye to see what those orders look like on a price chart, period, nothing else. To answer two questions and two questions only, where's price going to turn and where's it going to go? That That's how my brain was developed in this. And then all of a sudden, I, I you know, years later, I, I hear about, you know, all these chart patterns and head and shoulders and all these other goofy things and indicators and oscillators and support resistance and trends. And I'll never forget if, uh, uh, I don't know if the story's helping you at all, but uh, um, the first time I actually did learn it, uh, a friend of mine said, hey, you know, um, he said, I think the market's going, the NASDAQ's going up tomorrow. I said, oh, why do you think that? He said, and then he starts saying, well, um, MACD this and Fibonacci that. And I'm like, and I, I told my buddy Mark, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, you know, uh, MACD. I'm like, I don't know what MACD is. Uh, so he says, technical analysis, indicators. I'm like, I don't know what that is. So he, a couple days later, he walks me through this book, um, this big book. And it's got all the chart patterns and indicators and all this stuff. And, and, um, I remember flipping through it, him starting to explain it. And I was kind of, um, it was shocking to me. And I was, I was kind of like, well, obviously Mark, who would do this? Uh, you know, this is opposite of what we do on the trading floor. I'm like, this is like a recipe to lose money. And, and he's like, and he says, Sam, this is what everybody does. And that's when a big light bulb went off for me. I said, Oh, it's helping me under, understand why so many people lose money. And so very, so, so few people make money, right? Does that make sense? If you talk about the chart patterns, how many people like the chart patterns? Indicators, like uh, the chart patterns, like name your favorite chart pattern, by the way. Anybody have a favorite chart pattern? 
head and shoulders or what are some of the others? Double tops. What are some of the, anybody have any favorite chart patterns? Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to the charts in just a second. And I, I think the reason, you know, this, uh, I mean, I'm at this, this whole conversation started with one of your questions, but uh, um, the reason why I'm elaborating on it is because if the five minutes it's taking me to say this can save you years of time and thousands of dollars of losses, it's worth it, right? So think of, answer me this, whether it's like head and shoulders or, uh, those W's or double tops, double bottoms, um, any of the cup and handles, try all those things. What do they all have in common? Someone answer that. Wedges. What do they all have in common? There's a major flaw. There's a reason why no one in the world makes money with those consistently. Why? What's the problem? How do you make money buying and selling? No, I don't think banks target them. I think banks banks laugh at them. But uh, how do you make money buying and selling anything in life? Anything. Someone just give me like the kindergarten answer. How do you make money buying and selling anything in life? Buy low, sell high. Exactly, John. What do all those chart patterns have in common? Where's the entry? Where do you buy and sell? Think about it. Every single one of them, not in the middle, you buy high and sell higher, yes, or you sell low and buy lower. That head and shoulders pattern, you don't sell anywhere near the top, you actually sell at the bottom. Does everybody understand that? And that's that stuff is like the Bible of still today, of how people are learned, learned to trade. Banks don't need to manipulate any anybody. Uh, they've got... They've got plenty of money. Look, when I when I was on the trading floor, one of the things I was excited about, I said, "Ooh, I'm fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna be one of the few people on the world that finally learns like the secret of how big banks make so much money." Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna learn the big secret. Guess what? I learned it pretty quick, and it's not a big secret at all. What banks and financial institutions understand that the rest of the world doesn't is that how you make money buying and selling anything in life is exactly how you make money buying and selling in the financial markets. Okay, there's your pound yen, Aldo. We'll, we'll look at it next. Okay, how you make money buying and selling anything in life is exactly how you make money buying and selling in the financial markets. The smart money understands that and that is their strategy. Everybody else does the opposite. Okay, All right, does that make sense? Okay. Look, if you're tr if you're trained to buy high and sell low, trading is very hard. It's it's probably one of the hardest things you're going to take on. Okay. Um. It's like right. It's like trying to go deep sea diving without an oxygen tank. Um. Trying to fly from Los Angeles to New York but you only have enough fuel to get to Colorado. You're, it's pretty much going to be the same outcome. It's not going to work. Okay. All right. Um, yes, Philippe, we'll look at that in a minute. So let's look at the pound yen. Aldo, uh, what, Aldo, what are you thinking here? I mean, I mean, not what are you thinking, but um, are you in this? Are you wanting to be in this? Are you looking for where to get in? Um, this is going to have the same level as the others, right? So let's, uh, oh, you think it's a supply zone. Okay, let me just uh, put that there and scroll back real quick. So I'll see what that's coming. Yeah, so there's that same zone. We've gone over this same zone in other markets two or three times already. So you got that same zone down here below the low. And then on the supply side, right, we're going to have to, uh, yeah, so it looks like we have some supply right up here. Okay, and we do. Hang on. Just want to make sure 137.96. Okay, so let's do it here. And let me go to the 30 minute chart. I wanna make sure we get this right. 
Um, yeah, it looks like we have some supply here, and I would I would I would agree that we probably do have some supply here, but not enough to initiate a new entry into this market, because it's not the first time price is back here. Here's the supply zone. Here's the first pullback. So because of that, I always want to keep things high probability. So we go to the next uh, area of supply, which is right up here. Okay. And then of course, on the demand side, don't forget, we have a demand zone sitting right below these lows. Um, but right in here, we might, we might get a nice bounce out of that too. I see your question in the chat. Candle patterns, conventional candle patterns? No. Uh, they have nothing to do with supply and demand. Even the fact that a candle is red and green, um, it doesn't mean anything, right? Okay. Uh, so, so Aldo, again, remember, below these lows, there's a demand zone sitting there. But right up in here around 136.95, you know, watch that. Watch this whole area here, too. Typically, this is not going to be that strong. And just so you can understand, because of all this trading back here to the left, you don't want to see that. And the reason is because if supply and demand was so out of balance here, it wouldn't have been able to stay here that long. That's why the, this lower level, it's one of the reasons this lower level is uh, stronger. Okay. Let's keep going. And... Uh, yes, the equity index markets are... Um, So I want to share something with you here. Let me do this real quick, um, just so you can understand, because I see some questions about the equity in index markets. So every day in the morning sessions, uh, uh, whoops, sorry about that. Let me get you here. So in the morning sessions I deliver, this was uh, this morning's. Uh, we start with this. This is always up on the screen uh, before I start the session. Then we start the session. We always start with a plan. And uh, Friday and Monday's plan coming in today was, we said, while larger time frame demand in equity index markets is lower, we reached key small time frame demand levels yesterday, early in the morning. Uh, so we said, caution being too bearish equity index markets, you know, and we could see a bounce in the equity index markets. That was for yesterday. For today, okay, so the markets turned higher at demand. At the same time, bonds turned lower at supply, and they also still have some room. So we always want to go into every day, every session with a plan. And nothing I just showed you is just for day trading. Ooh, we just came into our daily supply zone up here. So this is a level we had going into today. It looks like we just hit it. Um, I didn't think it happened that fast. But anyway, uh, we did come back up here and hit our supply zone. So just if you're trading the equity index markets, markets like that, um, we, you know, the, the, the meat of the level is actually a little bit higher, but uh, we did just come into that. So there is a nice profit zone below. That means that the bonds have probably came down. There were, we have a 60-minute level here. Um, and my guess is they came down and hit that. Nope, they haven't yet. Okay. So uh, watch, you know, if the bonds get down to here and, and rally, um, that uh, can very easily turn the equity index markets lower. So you kind of want to match those things up. Just like we match up FX markets with the dollar, uh, we look for a couple correlations with the equity index markets always. The DAX has been the strongest of the equity index markets. And um, so we were able to catch that uh, just the other day from our uh, demand zone here. People in the morning session took that. And I want to share with you where the supply is. So uh, still a little bit higher. So supply, uh, now this is, there's other supply, but the significant supply zone starts around 1237. See that? Okay, 1237 up there. All right. Um, on that note, we are uh, over the time that uh, usually, um, uh, the time that we usually uh, spend going over this stuff. Went, went about five minutes over, but uh, hopefully that was helpful. You have my email address right here if you need it, sam.sidon at tradingacademy.com. Always here to uh, help if you need it. And uh, FX Street is here also. So you can find some recordings there. You can also uh, email me. You can visit uh, tradingacademy.com. And uh, yeah, 
So again, we try to pack it all in as, as much as we can in the 45 minutes we have together. We have another session coming up at the end of the month where we'll, uh, we'll take this stuff deeper and continue to practice what we preach. Have a great day, everyone. Great to see you, and uh, we'll see you next time.